right, this is Josh from East West Healing and Performance, and today I want to talk to you about hypoglycemia and headaches, or migraines, whatever you want to talk about. Now, according to the Mayo Clinic, that sounded really cool, didn't it? I'm quoting the Mayo Clinic from Google. I went to Google University. I got, like, my PhD from Google University, just like you. Hypoglycemia is a medical condition of having an abnormally low blood sugar or glucose level. It can be responsible for triggering, triggering or exacerbating migraine and other headaches. Should I just end this YouTube here? Not. And what they actually say is one of the ways to treat low blood sugar is with sugar. I mean, I love that. I, I really do love that. I mean, it's like probably one of the best lines I've ever heard. Now, I'm not saying eat white sugar. I know a lot of you guys are freaking out. Oh, my God, Josh is saying eat white sugar. I'm just saying eat fruits and roots. I mean, I could really end the YouTube here and say, if you're having migraines, what I want you to do is eat three to five times a day and eat proteins, carbs, and fats, you know, healthy proteins, carbs, and fats within every meal. And I guarantee you within a span of time you'd actually heal honestly you don't need to do botox you don't need to do some crazy silly thing that's out there that some doctor told you that you need um it's really that simple now i'm not downplaying the fact that people can have headaches because of physical reasons maybe a trauma they hit their head it could be issues with the sphenoid the dura you know, etc. in the body. Maybe they fall and hit, they fell and hit their sacrum. Could be uh, an issue with the sacrum affecting the cranial bones. You know, this, there's a lot of reasons people have headaches. But I can tell you from our experience of working with clients, experience that most people are not eating enough. Now, what are some of the causes of hypoglycemia? Now, let's just get this clear, like crystal clear, that most people just have blood sugar handling problems. I mean, they're, they're unable to regulate their blood sugar because they're not eating enough of the right food. Hypoglycemia is a technical word, so don't overuse it. It's more chronic, meaning the body's kind of lost the inability to actually store glycogen, store energy, and you actually have to use food in meals throughout the day as your supplementation so your body has the energy to survive and thrive. I actually trademarked that phrase, survive and thrive, so don't use it. Um, so there's two differences between regulate, like blood sugar handling issues, we could say, and um, um, hypoglycemia. You know, so it's a little bit more chronic. Now, what are some of the causes of hypoglycemia? You know, what I've seen is, or what my thoughts are, most people end up with it because they don't eat enough. It's, it's honestly that simple. Um, they go a, a lot of hours without eating. Maybe they wake up, have a cup of coffee with some milk and sugar. Or maybe they add gelatin. And, you know, I mean, that's great. But in the scheme of things, it's not doing enough. But it's, it's a good effort. And then they go and go and go and go and do and go and go and do and go and go and do and go throughout the day. Oh, my cat just made an appearance. Um... And then they go, oh my God, it's like three or four o'clock. I'm not hungry, but I have to eat. I'm human. So I'm going to have a meal. And usually maybe they're at Starbucks with their kids or wherever. So they grab a Starbucks, you know, one of their whoop de doo caramel marchiato thingamajiggies, you know, with a muffin or a bagel or a, a sandwich, you know. Um, so they've gone so long without eating. Now, the bottom line is, like I said, most people end up with hypoglycemia because they go too long without eating and it's consistent over a long period of time or they skip meals or these are all these fall all under fasting you're basically not taking in enough energy and not um taking in enough fuel to meet your body's needs on a daily basis what does that mean you're not taking in enough fuel to meet the demands that you're placing in your body so your body doesn't go into a stress reaction state so the food you're taking in has enough vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and calories, and carbs, and proteins, and fats to regulate your physiology and to meet the demands that you're placing in your body. So your body is able to kind of be maybe a, like 
live like that, like you maybe bump into stress and come back to homeostasis or whatever, but you're not always living in a stress state, right? Most people with hypoglycemia are. Their body's in survival mode. And when this happens, because we need food, we need carbs, proteins, and fats, you know, for energy production, for repair and regeneration, to help reduce inflammation, to produce cholesterol, produce store hormones, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to go into all those because this isn't a macronutrient lecture, but we need these things, especially the brain, since we're talking about migraines, because the brain the brain's primary source of fuel is glucose. Glucose. And the body or the brain needs this continuous supply of glucose in order to function. That's why if you've been studying for a long period of time, like a lot of you guys do, or I should say maybe if like you've been on your iPad or phone on or IG for a long period of time, and you start getting sleepy. It's not because you're bored. It's because your blood glucose levels are dropping because your brain's primary source of fuel is glucose. When we don't meet our body's needs and we're skipping meals and not taking in enough, what happens is we stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. And this is your body's response to adaptation. This is your body's response to keep you alive. Because if, you, if it didn't, you would actually go into a coma and die. And we don't want that to happen. So your body compensates. And it compensates by releasing certain hormones to keep you alive. And it does this by breaking down your tissues, proteins, and fats, and turning it into glucose. This is a very catabolic, this is a very um, not healthy, we could say, way of producing energy. And this is survival mode. This is running from a lion. This is when our digestion is affected. This is when our hormones are affected. We have sleep issues, heart palpitations, irritability, mood swings, or food swings. We start to sweat. We don't know what's going on. We have anxiety, heart palpitations, and weakness. Or what happens internally is we get vasoconstriction of the blood vessels in the brain. We get a constriction of the blood vessels. So remember that. Put that aside, shelf it, but remember that. Now, people with hypoglycemia typically have um, low blood sugar and high insulin levels. That's very, 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 very common. This is very common because the state we're in, the energy that we're not taking in, and the body's trying to compensate for this, and you're not taking in enough energy and your body's breaking itself down to try to raise the blood sugar, but it's doing it too much. And then you're releasing insulin, et cetera, et cetera. But then you have a high sugar in meal, so it releases insulin again. So it's like this roller coaster that's going on all day and it doesn't know which way to go. But a lot of the times what's happening is, just remember, we're getting that vasoconstriction from the body being in a sympathetic state, low blood sugar, high insulin. Now, typically when people are in a hypoglycemic state, of course, they're not eating enough. I don't know it's person specific, but typically most people, what we see is they're eating a diet deficient in protein. We see this all the time. And what happens is this prevents the body, among a million other things, <laughs> to, to actually store glycogen so we can actually convert thyroid hormone. It's no coincidence that the liver stores glycogen and this is where you convert over 80 percent of your thyroid hormone because you need glycogen to convert thyroid hormone so most people that are hypoglycemic we could assume are hypometabolic or hypothyroid it's really that simple and when people are in a hypothyroid state we're actually seeing a, th a slowing down of things a depressing of things right a slowing down now, thyroid also regulates circulation because it regulates the beating of the heart. So it has a huge impact on circulation and how fast or how slow circulation is going. Now, when we're in the state, of course, you men I mentioned the hormones that are being released. Over time, you know, initially you're releasing cortisol to break down your fats and tissues. But over time, you actually use all that cortisol up because you're actually taking not taking enough energy to actually even make more over time. So you actually end up with low cortisol, pe cortisol people. <laughs> you actually end up with low cortisol. And then your body releases adrenaline. It brings in the relief pitchers to try to mobilize stored glycogen from the liver and muscles, which you don't have. The problem is adrenaline's effect on the body is, or the skeletal muscle in the blood vessels, is vasoconstriction. This is why you're hungry, you get a cold nose, hands, or feet. Not me, but you. Because you're releasing adrenaline, it's causing vasoconstriction. It's not a good sign. You don't want to be in this state. You want to regulate your blood sugar. 
So if we put all that together, what's happening? We got low blood sugar, high insulin. We get the blood vessel constriction from being in a sympathetic state. We get adrenaline being released. We got more vasoconstriction. So what do we have? We have that tightening and vasoconstriction going on. But then all that insulin is, that's being released causes vasodilation. So now we have an opening of the blood vessels. And that's what causes headaches when we don't eat. It's being in that sympathetic state and being constricted and your body releasing insulin when you eat something sugary or you haven't eaten for a long time. And it opens the floodgates of the blood vessels and we get that vasodilation, we get that headache. That's why a lot of doctors will say, drink caffeine because it causes vasoconstriction and it'll actually close the floodgates and maybe get ready a headache but you're not fixing it right you're not fixing it so and if you really in the whole vasodilation thing the insulin causes vasodilation that's actually based off the work of um diana schwarzwein if you want to look it up um, in my little just thing about, you know, uh, the, the thyroid regulates the heartbeat and it regulates circulation and it regulates the slowing. It basically is going to slow everything down. It's going to slow the circulation down. You can study the work of Broto Barnes and a little bit of that is from Cass Ingram, Dr. Cass Ingram, C-A-S-S -S Ingram. So how do we fix this? Most of you want to know how do we fix this? Well, it's pretty simple. You don't need Botox, you don't need caffeine, even though caffeine can help a little bit here and there. A little sips throughout the day, after you've eaten. But the most important thing I would say, I would say, is, you ready for this? Make sure you write this down. Because you will find this nowhere else. Not in a book, nowhere else. Only on these secret notes. Eat food! Eat food, <laughs> so easy. Seriously, all you need to do is this. Wake up, write a list. Think about the carbs, proteins, and fats that you like. Proteins, you got muscle meats and chicken, venison, buffalo, broth, gelatin, whitefish, shellfish. I don't even care at this point because you're not eating. Just eat protein. Don't even get specific with it. Just get a variety of protein in your diet. I don't even care if it's pork. Right now, you need to create a foundation, right? You need to create a foundation by eating protein, eating carbs, fruits and roots, and, and getting different types of carbs in your diet. If you're going to have leafy greens, go for it. But just always have a fruit or root, 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 have a fruit or root with it to create some balance and get some sugar into the system. But you need food to, to actually fuel your system. Work on getting different types of food. But I would say start by eating three to five meals a day. If you go with three, work up to five. If you start with five, maybe work up to six or seven, or maybe not. But if you do this consistently, and you get enough fuel throughout the day, and you work on that frequency, that puts fuel in the system, teaches your body how to store nutrients and fuel again, thus you regulate hypoglycemia. Remember what I said at the beginning, it takes sugar to regulate blood sugar. If you take that fuel in, protein, carbs, and fats, when you wake up, maybe a couple, two, three hours later, two to three hours later, two, three hours later, you're putting fuel on the furnace. You're putting fuel in the system, and you're regulating your blood sugar, and you're not letting your body go into that sympathetic state to cause that vasoconstriction and not causing your body to release excess insulin to cause vasodilation. Thus, migraines are gone. My work is done. Peace. I'm out of here.